I'm Sarah Bosley, I'm the health editor of The Guardian and I'm also the author of a book called The Shape We're In about obesity, about the obesity epidemic. A news story about obesity is no different from any other news story that I might write or any story about any health issue because I do write about health issues. There are various different sorts of story and uh, some of the ones that we're writing at Porto here, this at Congress, are news stories. So we're looking at uh, scientific studies that people have produced, we're looking at presentations, we're talking to the authors of papers, and we're trying to pick out what are the most interesting things that they've found. That, that's a very standard news story indeed. So, um, and the way we write any sort of news story is with the most exciting, most interesting, and the newest fact at the top and then the rest goes further down and you contextualize it and if somebody has a difference of opinion with this scientist or author then you would put that in as well but it goes further down it doesn't go right at the beginning that's the sort of procedure for writing a news story but the selection of news stories is something that may actually interest people here because on the whole, journalists are going to choose those things that people are most, they think people are most likely to want to read about. So that does mean the thing that will, you know, make people sit up in the pub, you know, that's the usual test, what the man in the pub will get excited about. So here, there are a lot of journalists poring over all the abstracts and over all the papers to see if there's something really new, radical, revolutionary, exciting that's being said and they will select those stories to do rather than anything that might give you a wider context perhaps about obesity. There are different sorts of stories um, on obesity or on anything else and specifically on obesity what I deal with on the whole is the sharp end if you like, that's news. I also do write feature pieces, I write quite in-depth pieces, I write investigations but those are all very different beasts but all of that is part of the news orbit and it's very different from what you might call features or magazine journalism. So the sort of thing where people sit down on the sofa and discuss obesity, discuss stigma, um, or they might write in the pages of a magazine or for that matter in the features pages of my own paper. Those pieces are much um, calmer, low-key pieces, they tend to be very personal pieces about people's feelings, they're not necessarily about um, the, the extent of this obesity epidemic. So the, the sorts of pieces that I will write and other news journalists will write generally tend to be pulling out the fact that this is a, a really serious epidemic, there's a major public health problem here and something needs to be done about it. That I would say is the subtext to most of the news stories about obesity. And when it comes to images, uh, this is actually where people get most upset, I, I know. And I know this actually from writing my book because um, I was interviewing an activist and I had no idea actually that anybody had any issue with the sort of pictures we run. And she complained about what she called headless fatties. Pictures where somebody with a large amount of flesh is being shown, either often from the back actually, in which case you've got a head, but quite often with the head cropped off. And the reason I was surprised by this was because picture editors do that in order not to identify the person in the photograph. And they think that they're avoiding stigmatizing that person in that way. So that's a very different atti attitude, a different, um, a different way of thinking about the issue perhaps. They think it's better to show the show what morbid obesity looks like because that's normally what's in those pictures but without actually you know pointing out that this is a particular individual without blaming anybody for it in their that's in their their mindset maybe they've got it wrong but that's for us to talk about i know that there are image banks of uh, pictures that people feel are far less offensive than those that run in the newspapers um, i didn't know about that actually until i was preparing for this talk and I was shown them by IASO. Um, but I think the issue there is that um, there is a certain amount of normalization of obesity going on in some of those pictures. They would work well, I think, for the sort of features I've been talking about in magazines um, where people are discussing um, the generalized problems of weight gain and what you do about it um, or talking about even talking about stigma indeed you know obviously that's a great illustration for stories about stigma but we are writing about 
a very serious health epidemic. The issue we're covering is this huge epidemic that is taking lives, it's killing people. So for our purposes, we have to have something that's really impactful. The other point I would make on that is that obesity is becoming normalized. There are more people who are overweight and obese than those who are not. So that means that the images we're showing are the images that represent the vast majority of the population. People are not going to be impacted by that. These are people who look like themselves. They, so they think, well, where's the issue? Now, there are lots of presentations at this conference and other conferences showing that people do not recognize what obesity really is. That may be partly us to blame, perhaps, because we do run the pictures of very, very obese people. So it's a bit of a chicken and egg, but you will not have an impact. You will not make people sit up and you certainly won't influence politicians unless you hit them between the eyes. And to do that, you need really um, a grabby photographs, really impactful photographs, and also headlines.